about credibility statement, background, uh, the reason why the audience should listen to you or relevancy statement and then preview. So the central idea is referring to a complete sentence that will sum up the major ideas of your speech. Just a complete sentence, one sentence. And it will control the content of the entire speech and it should be clear and concise. Also contains sub points that will be helpful for the audience to know how your speech will be organized. And in this uh, central idea, you should avoid figurative language, language that will make your audience uh, uh, misunderstanding or uh, don't have any idea what you are going to say, what you are saying. And that it shouldn't be vague and also over the general. I have to pause sometimes because I have to of the entrance. All right, continue on central idea. This one is uh, one example on central idea together with sub points. Normally the central idea will be at the very last of a sentence in a paragraph like this one. So again, the central idea uh, is referring to main idea of the essay, of your speech. Other key features, uh, as mentioned, it should be a complete sentence and it shouldn't be a question form. And normally uh, it is placed, uh, it can be mentioned at the end of the introduction itself and it can be in form of um, point of view or the speaker's opinion or the speaker's attitude on a topic. It also shouldn't state the topic itself and it shouldn't directly announce your topic because it should be a complete sentence, sentence that consists of main idea of your essay or your speech. Here's uh, one example, another example of central idea where uh, there is ineffective one and also effective central idea. So the second one down here looks more effective because it is not too general compared to the first one. Next one. Uh, in terms of complete sentence, the first one looks uh, ineffective because it is not a complete sentence compared to the second example. Next one, uh, as mentioned, uh, your central idea shouldn't be in a question form like, like uh, the first one. How does indoor soccer differ from outdoor soccer? So the most effective one 
is the second one. This one are the example on complete sentence and incomplete sentence. A complete sentence with question form. So make sure you don't um, mention at the end of the introduction in a question form. Other than that, on figurative language, language, uh, like I said, language that will make your uh, audience misunderstanding or not clear on what you are saying, like the underlined word awesome, it is considered as figurative compared to the second one, second example, where the attractions uh, by referring to the uh, speaker, he or she mentioned on the attractions, which are a warm climate, excellent food, extensive, many new ruins. Next, on stating opinion or attitude by a speaker, you should do like uh, the example on the right, where it is based on the, how the writer or how the speaker feels about learning or playing musical instruments compared to the left one. The left one is just on fact on playing musical instruments. I'm not uh, reading one by one eh, on the example. I think you can read on your own. Other example on opinion also attitude. So that's about central idea. In short, central idea is like uh, in, let's say, in your essay, there should be this statement, right? So the central idea is like this statement, but then this time it's going to be in your speech form. So uh, the central idea should be uh, referred to your main point, main points for your speech. Next one on introduction and also there are um, examples on attention getters. In the introduction itself, you as a speaker can introduce your topic in general first and then you can, uh, as soon as you speak or uh, in your speech, you deliver your speech, you can break uh, the topic into more specific. For example, a topic on eSports, uh, at the very beginning you explain, you inform your audience that uh, there are 
recently is uh, e sport is very famous among the youngsters and then the elaborations and then as you uh, deliver your speech you um, point out the importance of esports for example siapa tu ishraf anything to ask No, madam, sorry. It's okay. All right. And then at the very beginning, you have to grab your audience's attention and also their interest because uh, it's the very first stage in your speech. So in the introduction, again, you have to be able to grab your audience's attention to listen to your speech. Then in the introduction also, you can reveal the topic what's your uh, speech will be about, then you can establish the credibility as a speaker. And this one we will look uh, later on credibility. And then you can create good rapport with the audience. And lastly, uh, before you jump into the first main point in the first body paragraph, you can preview the body of the speech, what your speech will be about. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, the preview can be the central idea or the thesis statement. Okay. So uh, this one is an example of ineffective introduction. This one is fine, but then uh, it is referring to your level. If you are in kindergarten school, uh, then it's fine to have this kind of introduction. So make sure your introduction suits your level as a university student. There are a few ways to grab uh, the audience attention. You look one by one with the example. First one, you can relate the topic to the audience. Uh, you can use pronoun you, like uh, the, this example. It's Saturday morning and you are helping clean out your grandmother's attic. You can use pronoun you and also um, it will make your audience to visualize they are in that situation. Same like the second example, you mentioned as human resource professionals, you and I also use pronouns here, you and I. Next one on identifying a common experience. Same, uh, almost the same like the first one. You can uh, identify who are your audience will be, then you can identify their common experience. The third one is by stating the importance of your topic. Like this example on exposure to the sun, uh, you can uh, state it is important for the audience to protect themselves from the harmful rays of the sun. Here are other examples. This one is an example on ways to be confident in job interviews. So this one also an example for the importance of the topic. Hmm. 
next one you can start the audience also can grab the audience attention you, uh, like this example at the very beginning you can ask few questions this one rhetoric the questions where the audience don't need to uh, answer to your questions because there are a few questions here and then uh, at the end of the sentence or at the end of the introduction in your speech you can start out the audience by stating this kind of fact for example this one the speaker stated uh, one of the 10 Malaysian women will be sexually assaulted sometime during her life so this kind of sentence will somehow startle the audience. Here are uh, other statements where it can startle the audience. Next one in arousing the curiosity of the audience. You can uh, have an introduction where uh, the curiosity, sorry, uh, this one is an example on a gift where it will uh, arouse the curiosity of the audience. So why do you think uh, this example will arouse the curiosity of the audience? Anyone? Why do you think this kind of example will arouse the curiosity of the audience? Anyone would like to try? Anyone? Madam, I think it's because it said that the gift could save a life. Yes, correct. Because um, normally, commonly, when we say a gift, we must think of uh, something that we can touch, something that we want to have it. Okay? So this one is about donation of your vital organs very rare one all right moving to this one other example to questions the audience like mentioned before you can use rhetorical questions few rhetorical questions in the introduction part Also, you can uh, use what if question like this one. So these kind of questions, you just um, ask the audience without uh, waiting for their feedback. Yeah, just make it. Seem like uh, this one on top. How often has your car broken down? Once, twice, ten, ten times. So these kind of questions, you don't have to wait for your audience to uh, give their answers. So this is known as rhetorical questions. Also, you can use imaging scenario.
next one uh, in the introduction to you can quote what someone has said normally someone who is famous who was famous like William Shakespeare so you, you can begin with quotation and then uh, you begin with uh, maybe the first main point or the, the central idea The example, this one referring to Will Rogers once saved. Then about marriage. Next on telling an anecdote where it is referring uh, when you want to share interesting story or story that is related to you, story that uh, you want the audience to know related to the topic, then you can do so. Like this one, uh, two examples here. One example uh, is where you can tell an anecdote. Uh, as an example, when you pick a topic on the importance of using sunscreen, for example. So in the beginning or in the introduction, you can um, tell your audience your experience when you did not wear sunscreen. What happened to your face? For example, so you can you can do that, yeah. You can tell based on your uh, personal story, not personal story, like yeah. It's this story that you want to share with your audience. Kalau personal, you don't want to share, guy. Kan? All right. Next, on stating an established or surprising fact, you can um, inform your audience on a fact related to your topic. Here are a few examples. Next, in establishing credibility, also should be stated in the outline and also uh, in your speech. So you can establish your credibility as a speaker when you dress properly. And then uh, the second one, you make a good eye contact with the audience. Even though you have cue cards with you, please, Try your best not to refer too much when you deliver your speech. Because uh, when you make eye contact, eye contact as much as possible, you will look a trusted and a confident speaker. Okay. And then the next point, uh, by stating your credentials, you also can mention uh, your background, education background, or uh, any working experience. What have you done in? Um, sorry. All right. Uh, continue. So this one stating your credentials, you can share with your audience uh, by stating your working experience, uh, any work that you have done, any research, research that you have done that is related to the topic, okay? 
and that um, you also carry with your personal connection to your topic and establish common ground with your audience. Maybe there are uh, common uh, interests that you have noticed with your audience, then you can state that. Next one uh, on preview or the central idea or thesis statement where uh, it's a glimpse of the presentation. You have to state your purpose, what your listeners need to do, need to believe. Also, you mention about the background of the topic and what are the main points that you will cover. For the conclusion, same like the introduction, you have to look at uh, the possible concluding materials as you research or uh, you find materials for introduction and also conclusion. And that in the conclusion too, you have to summarize the main points that you have mentioned in the body paragraph or in the body of, of your speech. And then conclude with a good wine, not a whimper, something that play with audience emotions, uh, something that can make them cry. So for that, and then you should be brief as a speaker. This one other points for conclusion, you can be a dramatic and also, of course, be confident all the time as a speaker. Then uh, at the end, don't say, don't simply say that's all from me. So try to end your speech with other statement. Conclusion also is equally important as introduction and also body of the paragraph because you will recap the main, the main points that you have mentioned in the introduction, I mean, body of your speech. And then you can use illustration or you can share personal experience in the conclusion. If you don't want to share in the introduction, then you can share your personal experience in the conclusion, yeah? And then you can appeal to the audience. And lastly, you can signal that that is the end of your speech. If it was the central idea, like mentioned, you have to recap what you have said. Then you can thank your audience for listening. And if you have time, you can ask questions to your audience here. Yeah? if you have time. Uh, this one um, is examples on memorable concluding remarks, quotations from someone who was famous. Any questions? Anything to ask? Uh, Madam? Yeah. Uh, when we do our speech, do we have to prepare any slide or we just keep talking through the presentation? Uh, I think I've mentioned in the uh, our first meeting on Google Meet, when I inform you about the assessment, where for, let me show you again. Yeah. I think I've mentioned.
camera ni nak working. So this one, the list of assessments for this food. So look at the first one on informing the speech. I've mentioned that for this speech, you can prepare minimum three slides. So you can prepare slides or if you don't want to, it's fine. But then uh, you can uh, show short video or show few pictures, few visual aids, right? But then this one, the first one recommended uh, where, where you have to prepare slides, minimum three slides. Okay. Okay, madam. Um, can we get the slide for our reference? Reference? Uh, can we get the slide for our reference? Okay, sure. Okay. Thank you, madam. Later, I'll give her. All right. Anything else? Anything else before I give you next task? Yang first task pun ada yang not ada. Semua belum submit. Uh, I want each of the class rep or leader from each group to submit to me eh, together with second task. So for your second task related to today's topic, I have to show you the outline again. So for today's task, you have to cover other components that should be included in the introduction. Okay. So there are attention getter and the credibility statement. Why should the audience listen to you? And then a bit about your topic, your speech, and then the relevancy of a uh, re relevancy statement or the reason why your audience should listen to your speech and that preview or the this statement of your speech okay anyway uh, i hope uh, you can give me or uh, state what your topic will be to your class wrap together with your task because I want to see and I want to make sure that there will be not a redundant topic or topic that is same. All right? Okay? Okay, madam. So the task again should be recorded in terms of the components in the introduction.
for the attention getter, you can refer to the slide that I will give later, the one that I explained. You can uh, start with surprising fact. You can ask a few questions. You can share your story or tell anecdote. Okay. Um, Madam. Yes. Um, do you mean that we have to record ourselves when we talk about attention getter, um, credibility statement, and all that in introduction? Yes. Okay. That's it. Thank you, Madam. All right. <laughs> 